What is up, third grade? Welcome back to another lesson right here in my science lab. Before I get started with today's video, I wanna give a huge thank you to all the people who watched and learned from my last video. Our last video. Margaret, where did you even come from? Over here. Well, I can see that. I've been in the bushes. Okay, well, as I was saying. Are you going to ask me? Ask you what, Margaret? Who else is in the bushes with me? Nope, I actually wasn't going to ask. Boom, it's me. I'm over here. I'm also in the bushes, approximately six feet away from Margaret. Okay, well, I'm glad to see that you're both social distancing. I'm Bobby Bob McBobberson. And I'm Margaret. But you can call me Keith. Okay, thank you for the self-introductions, but I actually wasn't planning on having any guests today. It was just gonna be with me, your host, Mr. Kerr. That sounds dreadful. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that sounds pretty boring. Super boring. More boring than watching paint dry. And not even a cool color of paint. Okay, okay, I get it. You were the stars of the last video, and I'm just the boring one. Don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah, come on now. Don't say that. But you're absolutely right. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna get this lesson started. And if you wanna be a part of the video, you can, but you have to let me be the host. Nod your head so I know you agree. All right, welcome back. I am your one and only host, Mr. Kerr. And today, we're going to be learning about pollution, and specifically, air pollution. And at the end of this video, you'll be able to answer the key question, what is pollution, and what can you do to help prevent it? That's right. Pollution is the addition of contaminants, or unclean substances, to our environment. These contaminants could affect our air, water, and land in a harmful way. And these are the three main forms of pollution on our planet. Air, water, and land. Air, air, water, and land. Air, water, and land. Air, air, water, and land. All right. What are you doing? We're just trying to get the three main forms of pollution stuck in their heads. I love making that catch a jingle or two. Okay. Well, today we're going to focus on air pollution. The Earth is surrounded by a blanket of air called the atmosphere. Air pollution is when the Earth's air, or atmosphere, becomes dirty. That's right. Part of the atmosphere is a protective layer called the ozone layer, which helps shield the Earth from the full force of the sun's rays. When pollutants like gases, dust, or smoke are sent into the atmosphere, it can damage the ozone layer and affect the environments of humans, animals, and plants around the world. I've been taking karate classes. What does that have to do with anything? So I can chop up all the pollution before it gets into the atmosphere. I don't think that's how it works. Yeah, no. Air pollution can be divided into two main types. <laughs> natural and human. Natural pollution happens naturally, but human pollution is caused by humans. Natural pollution happens naturally, but human pollution is caused by humans. Thanks, Margaret. Examples of natural air pollution would be things like wildfires, volcanoes, tornadoes, or dust storms. All of these natural events would cause pollutants like smoke, gas, ash, or dust to enter the atmosphere. However, most pollution is caused by humans. Examples of human air pollution come from things like factories, power plants, cars, and airplanes. All of these things use resources known as fossil fuels, which when burned can cause pollutants to enter the atmosphere. Some of you may be thinking that you've never used fossil fuels. 
No way, baby. You definitely have. Scientists have discovered that fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas can be burned to provide energy. Fossil fuels allow us to have things like electricity in our homes or gasoline for our cars, buses, and airplanes. This energy is awesome because it helps us live our daily lives. However, the more energy we use, the more gases we release into the atmosphere. Thankfully, our country cares a lot about the environment and is working to reduce the amount of harmful pollution that is released into our atmosphere. But we should always be striving to improve. There are other countries, however, that release so much air pollution that people can get sick and develop respiratory problems and lung diseases just by breathing in the air. Scientists call the haze in these pictures farts. No. Actually, the haze in those photos is called smog, which is fog combined with harmful pollutants, and they're wearing masks to protect their lungs from breathing in any harmful pollutants. To help solve the problem of human air pollution, scientists all around the world are working to find alternative renewable energy sources to replace things like fossil fuels, such as coal, oil, and natural gas. However, that is quite a complicated huh? and expensive process. So in the meantime, we can be mindful about the air pollution that we cause and do our best to leave a smaller carbon footprint. Which is the footprint left by a robot. Not quite. A footprint is a mark you leave by walking. But the way you use energy also leaves a mark. Carbon is created when we use fossil fuels like coal, oil, or natural gas. So your carbon footprint essentially refers to the amount of fossil fuels you use. Uh. Many of the things you do on a daily basis, such as turning on the lights in your room, riding the bus to school, or playing video games for hours, are actually using fossil fuels. Does that mean you should never play video games, stop riding the bus, and never turn on your lights again? Well, no, but it is good to be aware of the things that we do that use fossil fuels. That way, we can think about ways to use them less and thus leave a smaller carbon footprint. So let's get thinking. I'ma take a minute to trace my cute little footsie here. Boom, there she is. Isn't she a looker? Now. I'm going to give you a list of a bunch of ways you can make a smaller carbon footprint. Unplug electronics and chargers. Once your device is fully charged, it's fully charged, so unplug it. Bike, walk or scooter when you can. That way, there are less cars on the road burning fuel. I shouldn't have to even say this one, but keep your doors and windows closed if the air conditioning or heat is on, ya ding dong. Next, close the refrigerator door. Don't just stand there. Figure out what you want already. Huh? Turn off the lights. Do you really need lights on during the day, you scaredy cat? And of course, take shorter and cooler showers. When you turn those little knobs, it's not magic that's making the water hot. It's a heater. And it takes a lot of energy to heat up that water, you little stinker. Next, recycle and reuse paper at home and at school. It takes 70% less energy to recycle paper than to create new paper from trees. Make a garden. Plants improve air quality by absorbing carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen through photosynthesis. And lastly, don't waste food. 40% of food produced doesn't even get eaten. Instead, it goes to landfills and releases gases that contribute to air pollution. So from now on, you better eat your whole plate or I might have to give you a wedgie. That's it for me, back to you. Thanks, Margaret. Now it's your turn. 
I want you to get a pencil and a piece of paper and trace your own foot and write down three or more ways that you're going to leave a smaller carbon footprint. So pause the video and get thinking in three, two, one. Awesome job and thank you for choosing to leave a smaller carbon footprint in the future. Before we wrap up today's video, let's review what we've learned. We learned that pollution is the addition of contaminants or unclean substances to our air, water, and land. Then we focused in on air pollution, which is when the Earth's air or atmosphere becomes dirty, which can harm the protective ozone layer that keeps us safe from the full force of the sun. Bobby Bob McBoberson taught us that there are two types of air pollution, natural and human, and that most air pollution is caused by humans, which can result in getting people sick and harming the ozone layer. Next, we learned about fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas, and how many we use on a daily basis without even knowing it. Lastly, Margaret showed us a bunch of ways that you can leave a smaller carbon or energy footprint by doing simple things like turning off the lights and taking shorter showers. Congratulations, you are an air pollution expert and until next time, practice leaving a smaller carbon footprint, wash those hands, stay healthy, be safe, and peace. I'm not gonna do those embarrassing dances. It's, it's too embarrassing. I'm not, I'm not gonna do them this time.